Good evening, I'm Jennifer Sheehan. Thanks for choosing WENY News at 5.30. An inmate at the Elmira Correctional Facility will spend even more time in prison for assaulting another inmate earlier this year. A jury convicted Barry Mamadou of second-degree assault and promoting prison contraband after a two-day trial in Chemung County Court. Back in February, authorities say Mamadou slashed another inmate with a jagged piece of folded metal. The incident happened in the prison infirmary. Mamadou is currently serving 13 years in prison for a New York City robbery in 2012. Now he faces up to seven years in prison on this conviction. The term will run consecutively to his current sentence. A shed went up into flames this afternoon at a home on Veteran today, also damaging the nearby garage and home. The fire happened behind one of the homes on Chrome Link Road in the town of Veteran around 1.30 today. Town and Country Fire Department say it started as an electrical fire in a chicken coop and then quickly spread to the shed and garage. Fire crews say both the shed and garage are completely destroyed and the siding on the home is slightly melted. 11 chickens also died in this fire. No one was in the home at the time of this incident, and WENY News is told a passerby was able to get the homeowner's dog out of harm's way. No, there was no injuries, no transports. A passerby uh, got the dog out of the house. The house is fine, just melted a little of the siding. The shed is completely gone, and the back of the garage has been burnt. Along with town and country, Breezeport and Elmira Heights responded to the fire to assist with providing additional water supply. Two Elmira men are in the hospital today after they were robbed in their home last night. And police say the suspects are still on the loose. WNY's Logan Wilson has more on the incident and how neighbors feel about the safety of their neighborhood. And WENY News reached out to Elmira Police today to learn more about the investigation. They would only tell us they aren't releasing any other information at this time. Continue with WENY News. As soon as we get anything, we will let you know. Well, racism, sexism, and a lack of professionalism. Issues within Tompkins County courtrooms currently being investigated by a county task force. According to the Ithaca Journal, last night, six Ithaca area defense attorneys testified in front of the Tompkins County Municipal Courts Task Force. The task force has been put into place to investigate whether a centralized court system could replace town courts and also look for potential improvements to the local system. Ithaca lawyer Kelly Dam says because the judges have a lack of training on how to preside over cases, they apply personal feelings to cases rather than the law. The task force next meeting is scheduled for 4.30 in the evening on October 28th in the Government Tompkins Building in Ithaca. New York's Ethics Commission reports lobbyists spent nearly $131 million in the first half of this year trying to influence government decisions in the state. Funds were especially used for education tax credits, limits on charter schools, and tax breaks for New York City developers. The total is $21 million higher than the same time period last year. The Joint Commission on Public Ethics says the Coalition for Opportunity in Education spent $5 million, followed by $3.8 million by New York State United Teachers. Teachers. The commission will post the complete data online this Friday. The Area Agency on Aging in the Northern Tier is feeling the squeeze from the Pennsylvania state budget impasse. WNY's Natalie Bruzzo has more about the impact the financial strain is having on Pennsylvania seniors. One horse heads middle schooler is taking on a big project yet again, but she can't do it alone. WNY's Leanne DeRosa has a story of a community-wide volunteer project that honors men and women who fight for our country. Thank you so much, Leanne. We all love Sophie over here at WENY. And coming up, the YWC of Elmira and the Twin Tiers named a new CEO and executive director. She explains what her plans are for the future of the organization next. Weather service out of Binghamton and State College ending the growing season, so oh. there will be no more frost or freeze um, warnings or advisories issued, even though this weekend we're going to be in the yeah. 20s. You won't see any more of those advisories coming out of the Weather Service until next spring. See, and now it's time to enjoy the fruits of all the labor that happened over the summer. We've got squashes, apples, pumpkins, what, I mean, whatever. Technically, the growing season is still going on. Yeah. I mean, we haven't had a hard freeze area-wide yet, but that'll probably change this weekend. All right, perfect. Thank okay. you so much, Joe.
The Elmira and the Twin Tiers YWCA welcomed a new CEO and executive director today. Michelle Johnson, an Elmira native and former board member, was appointed the position earlier this morning. Johnson succeeded Pat Lambart, who retired after leading the nonprofit for almost five years. Johnson says as she takes on this new role, she wants to expand programming beyond just women and children and work more closely with surrounding organizations. I think the Y does such great things. The mission of the Y is to empower women, and it's not really just about women, it's about everyone we touch, our families, our friends, our community. And it just seemed like a very exciting challenge, and today is my first day, and it's definitely been challenging. Johnson previously worked at Elmira College and says she will continue to teach graduate classes at the college as well. Coming up, the United States is set to hit the debt ceiling in the coming weeks. Just how much money is left and what Congress needs to do to fix this issue right after the break. Welcome back. Congress now has two fewer days to deal with the debt ceiling. Treasury Secretary Jack Lew says the U.S. will hit the debt ceiling on November 3rd, two days earlier than he originally thought. Lew says the U.S. will only be able to pay the country's bills when the cash it has on hand starting November. And that will not be even enough to cover all the bills on some of those days. The debt ceiling is a cap set by Congress on how much outstanding debt the federal government can have. It's currently set at just over $18 trillion. Congress is expected to debate whether to suspend or raise the debt ceiling next week. After a disappointing season on the ice, Cornell men's hockey team is looking to hit the reset button. Hear from the head coach coming up. Sports is next. Game five for the Mets in L.A. tonight. So it is lots of sports going on. Obviously, there's also Thursday night football. Perfect. Thank you so much. Joe's got a last look at your weather. And whoever thought the Cubs could be <laughs> so close to winning a World Series? And if you're lucky enough to head to the Windy City to see a game, make sure you have enough dough to get in. You're watching WNY News at 530. Cubs fans are paying top dollar to watch their team try and make it to the World Series for the first time since 1945. Tickets to the Cubs home playoff games were listed for a record average of $1,325. Oh. The most expensive Cubs ticket now is listed at first row box seat in the infield for just under 12,000 bucks. That's nearly twice the previous record set for a league championship, which was in for San Francisco Giants in 2012. The Cubs last won the World Series in nine 1908. That's the longest drought in sports history. Mm. And I'm proud to say everybody's got a drought in their life sometimes, and sometimes you succeed, and this time we're going to succeed. They're desperate. They're desperate for the win, but they may be facing, what, the Mets? If the Mets win tonight, then then they face Chicago. Then, Could then be you an interesting watch. news room. Right yeah, it's going to be any of the Cubs are going to win. Yeah, there's, well, not even, there's no even well, debate on this one. We'll have to wait and see. After 100 years, give us a break, Well, Joe. you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, quick look at the forecast. All right, radar showing some showers pushing in from the west. Body showers through the overnight period. Temperatures in the low 40s, 55 for tomorrow's 5-degree guarantee. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned for WNY News at 6 o'clock. I'll see you tomorrow night.